In order to remove your stone, we will need to perform a procedure called ureteroscopy. First, we will use our cystoscope to get access to your bladder. We will enter your bladder from your urethra, which is where you pee from. There will not be any cuts on the outside of your body. Once we are inside the bladder, we will find the opening to your ureter, which is the tube that drains urine from your kidney to your bladder. Once we have found it, we will place the wire into the opening and use x-ray to watch as we advance it to the level of the kidney where the urine first collects. Once we have all wires in place, we are then able to advance our sheaths, which provide a safe working channel for our instruments, protecting your ureter from our equipment. We will then place our ureteroscope into the sheath and up to the level of the kidney stone. We have a camera on our scope that lets us watch what we are doing in real time. Once we find the stone, we will use a laser to either break it into several smaller pieces, a technique known as fragmentation, or to turn it into a fine sand, a technique known as dusting. If there are several pieces, we'll use a small basket fed through our scope to pull them out one at a time. In some cases, your stone may be small enough to remove with the basket without using the laser at all. Once we believe we have removed the stone, we'll take another look in your kidney to make sure we didn't leave any pieces behind. Once this is complete, we'll then place a stent that goes from your kidney to your bladder if we think it is necessary. In some cases, it may not be needed. This is a small plastic tube that allows your kidney to drain well. If you didn't have it, your ureter could swell, causing slow drainage of urine, which would cause flank pain similar to what you experienced with the stone. You cannot see the stent from the outside of your body. It is all on the inside. A stent is something temporary that we will need to remove in clinic in one to two weeks. This is also done with a cystoscope. If it is not removed, it will form stone on either end over time, ultimately requiring another surgery in the future. A stent that is not removed can also cause you to have frequent bladder infections and discomfort. Depending on the specifics of your case, you may only need a stent for three days and we may leave it on a string so that you can remove it at home. A stent may cause your urine to look pink or red, it may cause burning with urination, and it may cause you to pee more frequently. You may also experience pain in your back when urinating. This is all normal. Of note, you can still be sexually active with a stent. The main risks of this procedure include infection, bleeding, injury to the ureter or the kidney, and possible failure to obtain access to the stone requiring a repeat procedure. The risks of bleeding, infection, and injury to the ureter are typically less than 1%. You will be asked to provide a urine sample prior to your surgery. By checking your urine for bacteria before the procedure, we are able to keep you safe and reduce your risk of a serious infection.
The knee is a hinge joint that flexes and extends like a door opens and closes. The femur, or thigh bone, connects to the tibia, or shin bone. Ligaments hold the bones together, and muscles move the bones. Between the bones is the joint. There are two types of cartilage, meniscus and articular cartilage, that absorb shock, stabilize the joint, and enable smooth motion. The patella, or kneecap, sits on top of the knee where it connects with the femur, forming a small but important additional joint. There is thin articular cartilage between the patella and femur, but no meniscus. Lifelong daily use of the knees, combined with varying physical activity and occasional traumas, can cause permanent damage to the cartilage. There may be cartilage tearing, thinning, fraying, or tissue loss. This wear and tear is called degenerative joint disease, causing decreased space in the main joint or under the kneecap that can progress to bone on bone. In degenerative joint disease, the knee loses its smooth motion and there may be painful catching or locking with certain activities. Also, because the damaged cartilage cannot absorb shock well, friction and stress can build up quickly in the knee with activity, leading to pain. When degenerative joint disease causes pain, it's called osteoarthritis.